G'day everyone, welcome to our third session. Um, now we've got Marg Simpkin, who's come to talk to us all about Teams and OneNote. Thank you, Troy. Hello, everybody. Just start with some brief housekeeping. Thanks so much for attending. And uh, the event will be recorded for compliance reasons. Troy will be running a question and answer function. Um, so if you want to ask questions, you can post them into the chat box. There'll be a couple of interactive slides using Poll Everywhere, and when we get to those, I'll explain what to do for the first one and it just follows through for the second one. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, if you have connectivity issues, we recommend that you leave the call and re-enter. I'm going to start with acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet today. We're all in different physical spaces, so it's a little bit tricky but the place I am delivering this from is near Hamilton in Victoria, which is the land of the Gunditjmara people. I pay my respects to the elders past and present, and I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are attending this session today and who are here today. Uh, just briefly, we're in a difficult spot here for the acknowledgement of country because we're at the um, boundary of three groups. So I just thought I'd share that. You can have a look at that later in more detail if you're interested, but it's certainly an interesting place to live and work. I teach at the Hamilton and Alexandra College. I'm a teacher librarian and it's been an interesting year to be in a library, but it's been also a very interesting year to be in a classroom. Uh, I teach a year 12 subject and a year nine subject in history and I teach junior school library lessons to some of the year levels there. So let's start having a look at some of the things that we've learnt. You probably can pick up from my image that I've been teaching for quite a long time. I've probably learnt more things in the last however many weeks of lockdown that we've had here in Victoria than I have in the rest of my career put together. We were in a very good position as a school, we were already using OneNote and we have been for years. At the senior school, the junior school had just started. We've been using Teams in some classes for a couple of years um, and we had revved that up and we had a wonderful plan that we were going to take a week off the last week of term one and we were going to work remotely so that we could get used to it all for term two. And then our Premier called time out on the first day of that week and we didn't come back to school for the Tuesday. So we went straight into it pretty cold at the start of term two. Before I start talking, I thought it would be interesting to get a bit of a feel for the type of audience that I'm dealing to. This is actually a screenshot that was has come from one of my class lessons. So that's why it says today's lesson. Uh, Poll Everywhere is an add-in that you can put into PowerPoint as well as a website that can be used on other devices and things like that. So if you go to pollev.com and you enter Margaret Simp 297, you should be able to see an activity in a minute when I move to the next slide that's going to ask you a little bit about uh, whether you're using Teams and OneNote already. If it works as planned, it should come up immediately with a series of responses. If it doesn't, I'm not going to panic because I've had a, a disaster this morning already technologically with my students. So if I have another one now, I think I'll cope. So here's the poll. It should be uh, activated. Hopefully I didn't just turn it off. No, I think it should be on. And if you can get in there and vote, it should come up immediately on the screen. Ah, thank you, whoever that was, the first person. <laughs> At least I know it's working now. Uh, that's always the tricky thing. And I guess that's the other thing, probably personal skill. I've got much more comfortable with trying something and having a mistake happen. And I actually think it's strengthened the teaching and learning process, certainly with the year 12 students but to some extent with the year nines as well. If we're not afraid to fail in front of them, I think that actually helps them to take chances as well. 
And I know when I started teaching, we were sort of given the impression that we were the guru and we knew everything. And I knew that wasn't true when I started because there were some big gaps in the geography side of my qualification that I was aware of. And I've come to realise there were a lot of other gaps as well. So there won't necessarily be a whole lot of how to's here for those of you who are CD or E respondents, but there's plenty of advice coming as to how you can um, how you can proceed after this. So just a little bit of background information. I teach Year 12 History Revolutions. When we were sent into lockdown the first time, we were in the middle of guillotining all the people in the French Revolution because the revolutionaries were killing each other off at a rapid rate of knots. I put my hand up this year to take on a, a Year 9 class. The teacher needed to pick up something else and I thought oh, I might as well jump into the frying pan. I didn't realise how deep the frying pan was going to be at that point in time because this was probably about week two or three of term one. So when we got sent home, I had to take their photos home with me because I had no idea really who half of them were. We were stuck in the Industrial Revolution at that point and we went home taking a COVID-based research task where they were to record what was going to happen at the start of term two. As, a, as they lived through it, living through a historical event in practice. Uh, and then, of course, because it kept going as remote learning, we had to do a few other things. Teams was probably the saviour for us. We'd already started doing some trial meetings and things in teams, but we had also um, been using it with our BCE students in a lot of subjects. So that was good. Uh, but what came out of it was really interesting. Students who normally don't speak up in class were quite comfortable to go in and ask questions. So suddenly I'm seeing people who I thought were quite confident and quite good at finding information asking quite basic questions. And we were looking at 1925 where Stalin started flexing his power in Russia. And, and this student saying to me, well, why would Trotsky have resigned? You know, like he's, he's had all these big positions. Why would he step out of the military when he's been running the army? So I was able to, to get her to work to the solution by asking her the questions. And in a classroom, she probably wouldn't have asked them. With my year nines, I've got a group of boys who want to grow up and go home on the farm. And if they could do that tomorrow, they would. And in some cases, they were organised through another member of staff to take some time out during remote learning one so that they didn't have to be in our classes, but they had to try and keep up. And this, this little fella had made an arrangement to miss two full days of school and they both hit, I have five lessons a fortnight, they hit two lessons out of those five. And he's, he's struggling academically as it is without missing classes as well. So I put him onto my helping team. I got him to, to judge things that had been done while he was farming when he was in class. And I had a, an activity I was trying to test drive and I sent out a request to three of them. Can you just test this for me? And the other two got back to me. So I knew what I was doing was going to work, but he didn't get back to me until I took my phone in the morning and had a look where I noticed he's responded to me at 10.51 PM. I was asleep. Sorry, I'm sorry for the late reply. So I sent him a message straight away. What time did you go to bed? And he says, oh, one in the morning. Dad had me working on a few things till then. Now, I wouldn't have known anything about this family in that sense if I hadn't been co communicating with this boy in this manner. So it made me aware that what we think is happening is not always happening. The other thing that became incredibly obvious. We use class one note, as I say, we've been using it for a long time. The assumptions that I was making about what they saw, how they interpreted it, and what they could do uh, was quite alarming, really. And I'm looking at my pages, and this is an example, thinking, oh yes, it's all pretty clear where we are, what we're doing, the blue is what we do at the start of the lesson to sort of get a bit excited. The green is the, the basis of the, the day's work. And then there's some time at the end for the, them to um, master what they've learnt. 
And then there's the weekly homework. So that was well established with these students by the time they went on their first period of leave. This is the template that I had on every single topic that we covered for the timeline part of learning their history course. <laughs> and um, they had been sort of doing most of it some of the time, but I realised a lot of them had pages that still looked like this, where picking their five top events from the list and then writing something about it was still bare as the day it was born. So I, I started asking them questions during the team meeting and elucidating a little bit more information. So I, I realised very quickly I had to go beyond colour coding the introductory bit and I had to do a little bit more about where's the question and where do you put the answer. So we set up some team, team tablet uh, grids like this using the, the table tools and I attended a session with Megan Towns and she talked about colour coding. So I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So we went with pink, pink being my instructional bit and green being where they do the answers. This task I hadn't actually really thought through. I knew in my head what I was trying to achieve and I was trying to convert something I used to do in class, typically on a big piece of paper with them. And one of my students immediately copied and pasted it and made it two tables one for the peak of power and one for the trough of despair, which was even more sensible. So towards the end of the lesson, when I started sharing their responses through the team meeting by going into their class one note and sharing it with the class, they were warned that was going to happen first, uh, they went in and, and saw hers straight off and I said, this is why it's valuable to me as well as to you. You show me ways of working that I might not have thought of and together we learn more than we would otherwise. So. The colour coding was really good. When I applied it to year nine, most of them are working in dark mode on their screens, which I hadn't even thought about. And it was only because I was in at work in the office and they had the remote learning students in the library. While I'm teaching from my desk in my office, I can see this boy working. And it wasn't pink and green at all. It was two, two different colours. So I had to change my terminology for them. The year 12s, coped pretty well in the first bout on and off. The first bout was about six weeks, I think, of, of working from home. Term three, we were home all term. So by the end of term three, when you logged on to the meeting and they started coming through, if you got them to speak to you, you could hear in their voices how they were coping. And <laughs> it wasn't good. I'm very lucky with this particular class. It's a small class. Uh, there's six students in it. And so you get, you've got time to greet them as they come on and have a bit of a conversation. So I started thinking about, you know, we're doing interactive activities and we're doing other things like that. But what else could we do to try and raise the spirits a bit? They, they're getting over turning on their cameras. They started off showing me their cats and their dogs and their whatever they'd done to their hair that day, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, we're getting to the point where their assessment, their serious assessment is looming. So I started putting uh, funny or silly, depending which way you look at them, titles on my team meetings. And by the, about the third one, I was starting to get feedback from them about, oh, what do you think we're doing today or uh, whatever. And it just sort of gave them a chance to have a bit more social time. While they've lost a lot of class time, face to face, they have gained a lot of teaching and learning time compared to a normal school program. All the sports days, all the meeting interruptions, all the long assemblies, the special event sort of things, which they are mourning and I, I can see why, but at the same time, that's become teaching time. So in terms of comparing these students to previous years, they're actually in a slightly better position and it's quite good to be able to tell them that. And I don't seriously torture my students in class, so it's OK. The year nines, however, were a completely different category. I started off just using the team meeting and the OneNote. 
And it's very easy to come up with lots of excuses when you're in year nine as to why you couldn't do something. And there was a lot of, oh, my OneNote wasn't syncing. A lot of, oh, I couldn't get it to work. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise where to find the meeting, that sort of thing. So we had to come up with very clear guidelines as to how we were going to function and where they had to go. And for serious cases, we ended up contacting home and talking through with parents. And it was interesting when we ran our parent teacher student interviews, the students host those through their teams and we join, we call the meeting and they get their parents to join them. And in most cases, that was the mum and dad and the kid at the table or mum and mum or dad and the kid at the table. In one case with one of my year 12s, it was actually me in my classroom, she in her home and mum was at the wool shed. So it made that sort of discussion very easy. And some of the parents were saying to me, is it possible that there are times when they can't get in? And the reality is we can actually see a lot of data at the back we can see if they're online or offline. A lot of them had little lights on Teams showing that they were actually in other calls that they'd set up with their friends. So things like that were going on. And so it was really important to restructure their lessons to try and keep as many of them on board as possible. So in, in addition to Teams and OneNote, I started making a lot of use of PowerPoint and the ability to record your screen on, onto a slide and then converting that into a stream that went into the Teams chat. So I put as many things as I could in as many different places to reduce that I couldn't find it. I'd started off with pages like this in my class one note that were very pretty, very busy. This was actually one that was shared by another teacher of the year nines and all three of our classes did it. And the more I looked at it, the more I think I can see why they're struggling. So I moved from that, I put what I'd put into place with my year 12s with the different coloured table sections and things. And I'd been starting to put audio recordings. There's a couple of very weak achievers in this class. And there's one little boy, as every day I'd start the lesson, I'd give the explanation I'd tell them to go and start doing whatever it was and he'd be straight away on the call. I don't know what to do. So I'd talk him through it and he'd go away and he'd do it. And I thought, well, if I put that into OneNote and I tell him that's where it is. So we got to the point that every time I said, start the lesson, I'd get the call from him and I'd say, it's in OneNote, it's this page, have you found it? Okay, off you go. And he very rarely came back to me. In the very last lesson of term three, no, term two, um, before they came back to school, I got halfway through the lesson and I thought, I haven't heard from Charlie. So I went into the chat and I said, Charlie, are you okay? And he says, yes. And I said, do you need a call? No. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm listening to you. <laughs> so he, he had it running, so I've kept that going. And then I had some of them saying they couldn't make it work. So I added the PowerPoint um, recording, turned it into a stream, put the stream into the, into the OneNote page, and then they could go and participate. So by the end of the term, last term, they were getting pretty tired. And I was thinking, what, what could we do? They've missed out on going to China this year. They've missed out. They got their Melbourne trip in just. Missed out on uh, going away late last term on a bush experience thing. So I said to them, let's have an excursion. So I, I set up an excursion where we went virtually to the um, Canberra Art Gallery and I got them to pick some images that were representative of what they thought being Australian meant because it, it links into a lot of our studies. And we went, we went and did that and it was probably a lesson that most students did something they didn't all get it right. So the following day, I put a thank you in Teams saying, thank you for your hard work in Canberra. And um, we put a little clip together sharing what we'd learned. And then we went into the OneNote and we went into the collaboration space. 
and I'm being very hesitant to go there with this particular group. So this is the page that sent them there. This is the demo page in OneNote that sent them there. The help video was the one that you just saw the picture of. Here it is twice on the same page in case they didn't go there. This is what they had to do. And you've got your um, pink for me and green for them or whatever colours it does in dark mode. And they had to put their images in there. Once they put their image in their space, the rest of the class then added a vote. That got pretty physically messy because there were some very big ticks appearing on the page, but again, it did give them a sense of engagement. The ability to create things using that uh, screencasting facility within PowerPoint means you can use whatever product you're using and then open a new slide in OneNote, so, sorry, slide in PowerPoint, and you can film yourself putting something in OneNote, putting something on a page, moving something around in an activity that's on a website or something. And this is an example of, of where it all collects and you can then share it with them. And it's also possible for some of the weaker kids to actually give them a little film clip with feedback on what they've done or or how it works and underneath the box says the child's name the reaction from that actually i've realized it's there twice and i didn't cover it up the, re the reaction from that was very positive from the students so that was something was worth doing if i had the time if i didn't have the time there were other ways of, of um, getting that message through. They're very good on the team's messaging and just having a smiley face sent to them or something as well. The other thing I've um, done a fair bit of is using forms. And until recently, that wasn't something that was easy to insert into a PowerPoint for me. I knew it was supposed to be possible and it was only when I realised I had to contact the te tech team at school and get it fixed. There's some back end thing that had to be changed. And of course, then I get told it's been changed, but it takes about three days sometimes to come through to your actual workspace. But using forms is fantastic in terms of, of getting them involved, but also in terms of knowing who said what and what sort of things they want to do. They're quite happy to uh, have that. And then it's, it's good using the way it comes back to you as a result to share the answers without actually exposing individual students. Incorporating the first page of the one I would fill in if I was a student is another way of, of helping to work them through the actual product. So I'm not sure if, if there's something I've, I've touched on you'd like to know a little bit more about, if you could let Troy know in the um, question and answer page, because at the moment I'm running really well for time. So if there's anything that you'd like to hear a little bit more about, if you could put that in there. The next activity is coming. Oh no, hang on, there's one more. Um, the next one we're going to do together is going to come with a warning. So, <laughs> and you'll see why in a minute. So this is more of an example with what I've done in year nine. Um, the last lesson of last term, they were, they were really, they'd had enough. And I thought if I follow up my Canberra excursion, which had gone well with something, it's highly likely there won't be too many there. So I said to them, who'd like to run a lesson? And I got four volunteers and um, one of them came back to me after volunteering and said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I said, no, that the point was you come up with something. So four of them came up with, with activities. There was a Kahoot and there was a little drag and drop activity in Word online that worked pretty well. Uh, and th there was a, another activity that was shared that was a little bit more convoluted and I was a little bit concerned it wasn't completely relevant. But the students got right into it and then I sent the praise uh, option. I hadn't played around with that a lot. And again, even the year 12s love getting praise. So that's really well worthwhile. The sort of things that students like to do that work, but are also educational, can be quite limited. 
And so you sort of, you can get hesitant as to will, you, will I or won't I, but I actually think I'll continue doing this sort of thing when we come back to school next week. And hopefully we can build it in uh, a bit more often because I think, I remember being told when I was in teacher training, if we can explain something to someone else, we understand it better ourselves. And I think the students who offered to, to volunteer actually found that too. The other activity that worked brilliantly with the year nines was putting them into teams and setting them work using Office 365 versions of PowerPoint, setting up the introductory slide with the title and then putting in four pages, one for each of four different students. And then they got to present those through teams when we were remote. That, that actually worked really well also. I should have thought to get some screenshots of that. It's that balance between the actual doing, the meaningful doing, the rich learning that you're hoping you're going to achieve. And for the first time, I could actually monitor that much better than I can in face-to-face -face classroom, especially when you've got a big class. And I must admit recently, some of the comments coming through from Northern Hemisphere schools where some people are dealing with classes of 50, and I'm I'm complaining about a class of 21 and I felt quite embarrassed for myself. It's quite difficult. And then there are some things that year 12s are capable of managing quite well. Whereas year 11s, maybe year 9s not. And here's a classic example of that. Again, this is uh, the one that the app that we used at the start where you went in and we got the graph come up. This is a different type of activity and it's called a word a word activity, a uh, word cloud. If you're not paying for this website, Poll Everywhere, if you're not paying for your access, you can't see who's coming back. So if, if I'd paid and they all had a username in my class, then I would know who these people were. And I, I've tested this subsequently, but I've given a warning the second time to students. I tested this subsequently with my seniors and I was intrigued to try and work out. I put them into an activity where they could use as many as so many words. And I was trying to work out if the, the words that came up a certain colour were a certain individual and that wasn't even the case either. This is only part of a screenshot of the um, work that came back from the year nines. There were some less pleasing things on the right hand side, so I'll leave that to your imagination. When I went back and checked the data, I can see that this contribution has come from four students. And given the students who are on the call, there's an obvious one, but the rest of them aren't really, which is a little bit interesting. So, Let's have a go at this with a grown up audience and see how we go. Whoops. This again is back in Poll Everywhere and it should just activate now that I've opened the slide for you. And once we've got this, we can talk a little bit further because we've certainly got plenty of time and you can also ask verbal questions or ask Troy questions and I'll answer them verbally while we're Mark, still on I the call. I want to share that link again so I can put it in the chat so people can participate. Uh, I don't know how I do that, Troy. Is it the what? same one as before? I think I shared it earlier in the chat. It is the same one as before. It's just yeah. back to the um, pop, the capital P O W L dot ev.com, I think. Hang on. Hang on. Yep, I found it. I'm posting it in the chat now for people. Beautiful, thank you. That's one of those things I haven't got a copy of on paper. So it's to the same place. Oh, it's actually at the top of the slide, Troy. I've just looked at it now. <laughs> you threw me. So if you go back into that, Margaret Simp, get Simp K uh, 297, it should just come up as active now. Someone's found it.
The other thing that's weird is it keeps altering the angle. So and it doesn't there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to the pattern that they pick. See what I mean? The other thing I'm not sure of with this, I took a screenshot with my year 12 class this morning. We were just working on what words they could use in responses instead of flogging some words to death. And um, once you've, if I go back in now because I don't have a paid account, I would have to clear this before I could start another one. So I actually grabbed a screenshot while we did it to share with them because um, otherwise it would be lost. I haven't asked what this costs to pay for, and I'll just bide my time and see how things pan out. I prefer to use apps that I can control where possible, and we obviously have a lot of those within Microsoft, but uh, not all. And there's a limit to how much you want to spend, and it's obviously our school budgets have all been impacted by this circumstance we're living through. There were a lot of free options open earlier in the year, but I'm always hesitant if I don't know I can continue to use them. I think I think one of the things that's really in the last two weeks we've been noticing as teachers in, school, in a school that has been in this remote learning for so long now, the ability to pick up a document and read it is much harder than it normally is. And the number of things where someone's asked you to do something and you believe you've done it, but you can't find where you did it and they can't find it, but they might have it. <laughs> And this seems to be coming, I think it's probably a type of brain exhaustion and it's a little bit worried that we've had, worrying that we've just come out of holidays and we're already in this state now. But I think it's that whole impending, uh, we're going back to school and knowing what that was like when we did it last time, there's probably all that coming into play. Now, I'll just flip to this and then I can go backwards if we need to, there are a number of fantastic courses in the Microsoft Educator Centre where you can go in and work at your own pace on the skills that you would like to develop or you feel you need more information on. The uh, things on OneNote are brilliant. Following Mike Tholson on Facebook or Twitter, is a really good way to go as well. The courses are usually, they'll give you a time, but they're usually shorter than they say when you actually do them, particularly if you've got some experience. So I can't recommend it highly enough. And certainly when we went into this process at the start of the year, we had a lot of people jumping in for the first time ever and going through and doing actual courses on OneNote, they might have been playing with it for a while, but they hadn't really worked out how it worked. The Teams ones at the moment are probably going to be interesting because there's been so many changes in the last few weeks because of the Northern Hemisphere return to school deadline. And it's sort of hard to imagine what it wasn't like when you were working the way we've been working and seeing their reactions to how that's going at the moment has been quite challenging really. Um, probably more so for them than for us. But the other thing I found interesting is some of the teaching staff in our school who typically avoid attending professional learning sessions at work and they, they just work in their own subject area and they're very good in their subject area, but they hadn't had to consider any of this sort of thing. Some of them have been the most um, accomplished users by the end of the process. And one lady in particular, when she first contacted me, I was quite concerned because it was taking a lot of time. And when she started sharing her end products with me, I was absolutely blown away. So it's really important to have a go. It's really important to use 
spaces like this and follow the right sort of people around on social media. I've got my links coming up in a minute. Troy, are there any questions coming through in the chat line at all? Um, there've been a lot, Marg, but I've actually answered them all for you by, <laughs> by, by chat and with um. You might have done it better than I could have, especially at this point of time on a Friday. Right. Uh, <laughs> so no, Thanks. that's pretty much done. So if you just want to wrap up, and I'll yeah. I'll share your um, uh, Twitter handle I've already thrown in there for people. Um, I'll, I'll throw your email address in there now. Okay. So thank you so much for coming, and it's been. It's been really helpful for me to work through the process of putting something together for other people. It gives you a chance to reflect. And just before attending this one, I attended Mark Savory's on the hybrid learning situation. I really hope when we go back to school next week, our students are on site. The South Australian government's let our South Australian borders come back, so that's a big win. Our international students are still stuck in China and Cambodia and they had to do their gap in their own countries and do orientation classes on Monday for their GAT. So they're very worried about having missed Monday's lesson. But as the school said to them, you need to go and see what the testing centre's like and work out where you're going. Um, I've, I've got my email address here. I'd be delighted to hear from anybody who would like to find out more or to ask how to do something. The You can do it in 90 seconds. YouTube channel for Microsoft is fantastic. Twitter is brilliant if you're a teacher and you follow the right people. You don't have to take any notice of the people who are vitriolic um, political leaders and things. And LinkedIn increasingly is becoming a go-to place for a lot of help and a lot of interaction. So try those and hopefully I'll see you online somewhere. And all the best to everyone, whichever state you're in and whatever happens next, let's keep our fingers crossed that it works in terms of protecting our health. Thanks, Troy.